Hi, my name is Olajide Olagunju, and I'm the author of the book, How to Resolve a Conflict. And that's the book I'd like to share with you on the screen, How to Resolve a Conflict. And this book is the textbook uh, for the lecture series you just joined. Um, the title of the lecture series is How to Resolve a Conflict, same title as the book. And this is lecture, forgive me, this is how to resolve a conflict lecture for the 43. Welcome. Um, please subscribe to the channel uh, um, now, if you don't mind, before we continue. Um, so what we do uh, in this uh, lecture series is to read the book text and then have a, a discussion um, so we've looked at, we're looking now at the, uh, generally at the person of the mediator, uh, what it takes to be a mediator, what are the skills, the, uh, what's the business of the mediator, what is the key role of the mediator and all of that. And we've been doing that for, you know, uh, for about two, three lectures. Um, today we're talking about components of effective communication. Um, we had talked about the fact that the key role of the mediator is to uh, be an effective communicator, to master effective communication, whether because that's what she or he uses to help the parties move from conflict to resolution as much as possible. And now we're looking at the components of effective conflict resolution. We talked about listening, we talked about understanding. Uh, and under understanding, I told you about my experience on the field as a young mediator to about 26 years ago, uh, where I, uh, did what I would not do now. <laughs> so when you listen to the, the lecture for you, you will see that um, my, that interesting learning experience for me. Of course, if you are joining for the first time, uh, you can also watch lectures one to forty-two on YouTube. Uh, once again, thank you for coming. So we've looked at two of the components of effective communication. We looked at listening. We looked at understanding. Let's continue. I read inquiry. Assumption leads to frustration. It's crucial to ask questions to ensure that one understands what the other person perceives as reality. So that's one component of effective communication. You cannot be an effective communicator if you're not good at inquiry. Do not assume. As a mediator, you cannot assume. Yes. Would say that part of communication is non verbal body language. Being able to know what they are saying without saying it. Ah, but that doesn't mean you assume that you got it right. You need to ask, is this what you are saying? Of course, you don't have to ask when the other part side is there because what they were properly saying, which you properly got right. They didn't say it because the other party is there, especially at the beginning of mediation. They don't feel comfortable with the other party yet. And even with you, they may not be feel so comfortable. Maybe they feel more comfortable with you than the other party. And so they expect you to hear what they are not saying. But having done that, they need to get back to them. This is what I heard. Is this what you said? Or is what I think I heard? I'm not sure. So assumption leads to frustration. If you, if you assume that what they heard is what they said, and you run with that, you may create problem for yourself, um, for the parties. And so we do, not, um, we do not assume. Now, so it's crucial to ask questions to ensure that one understands what the other person perceives as reality. Don't forget, it's not your conflict. It is their conflict. You are only trying to help them uh, understand themselves, understand each other, and communicate uh, each other's reality to one another. So ask questions. I mean, uh, one of the key things in mediation is um, asking questions. You know, we call it sometimes dialectic, you know. 
for clarification so that you'll be sure that you're on the same page with, it, with them, with each party and with both, with both parties. Next component, correct timing. I read. Um, uh, forgive me. I, I need to quickly run down back to where I was. Uh, I missed, uh, I pressed the wrong button. So I'm going back to components of effective conflict resolution. Um, forgive me. So that's in the chapter seven that talks about the mediator. Yes, I'm back there. Uh, so the one I want to read before I lost the screen was um, correct timing. That's the fourth component of um, effective communication. Correct timing. This let me read. It's not only <coughs> excuse me what is said that matters in effective communication. When it is said, to whom it is said, and how it is said, determine whether or not the correct message is transferred to the target or ultimate recipient. And more importantly, it, it determines how the speaker is perceived, either as foolish or wise, which perception may either promote a discussion or constitute a distraction. This is very important. So I would like to discuss it a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. It is not only what is said that matters in effective communication. When it is said, to whom it is said, and how it is said, determine whether or not the correct message is transferred. And you will recall that we discussed one or two of this before. When we were talking, for example, about um, what here, um, you remember in, in the 10 step mediation, we were talking about, um, we talked about step uh, seven. Um, where we said, which we said was, if I, mean, I don't know if we use the word, but it's, it's basically aesthetic. Um, somebody says something. If, if you, you as the mediator takes what is said directly to the other party, it may hurt them. And so the, you, you take yourself back uh, to square one, to the beginning of the uh, mediation, where you have to deal with the understanding, feeling, deal with the feelings. And so we said that in step, step seven, what we do essentially is look at the options coming out. Look at the way they are presented. If it sounds hot, hurtful, it is the business of the mediator to make it sound less hurtful. To present it in a way that where it is, so, so that it can be received, it can be considered. And I give, I believe an example of if you as a party, tell me, I should tell the other party that they should get themselves out of the land in dispute. They should carry themselves, take themselves out of the place. Now, there may be something useful in that option, but the way it is couched is painful, it's hurtful. So the mediator doesn't just say, oh, the other side said you should carry yourself from the land, you should take yourself from the land, move yourself from the land. I have to recouch it in a way that the essence of the communication will not be lost. What is being communicated will not be lost. I don't have to rephrase that now. I think I tried to do it when we're discussing steps. Step seven, but I have another. I have another example. If you say, "Tell me as a mediator," that should tell the other party. You, a party, tell tell me, the mediator. That should tell the other party that they have they have an attitude problem. It would be foolish of me to go and tell them that. Now you may be communicating something essential, but they will not be able to hear it or consider it if I don't tell the phrase, the frame it. So that's why I'm saying here. What you say is not enough. How you say it, when you say it's important for effective communication. 
And so the example I was with, I, I just gave. Tell the other side, they have an attitude problem. I won't tell them they have an attitude problem. I will probably tell them, um, it appears there's a communication uh, problem between the two sides. Now, I've tried to communicate what did they say without creating emotional upheavals, creating new problems. And so I need to, as much as possible, be sensitive to the fact that words are very powerful. And the way they are presented is probably even more powerful. So if you want effective communication, you don't present words in a way that it creates problems, creates infinite, hurt, pain. So even though this uh, here, we say correct timing, it's not just correct timing, how it is presented and uh, to whom it is presented is also very important. Now, um, I also said here that the way you present what the communication may affect people's perception of you. Now, if I'm a mediator carrying those negative communication messages without doing step seven on them, which is to give them, give them a human face, make them or make them look good, what do you think the people, the parties I'm speaking to, I'm communicating to, I'm carrying the message, how do you think they perceive me? Of course, negatively. Foolish, probably. But if I present it in a way that is sweet, <laughs> even if it contains poison, <laughs> because uh, the fact that something looks good doesn't mean that the option that works. But at this stage, we're not looking at which one will work, which one will not. We're just trying to put together the options. It doesn't mean that's, that's the solution. They're just options. So now if I present the option, not with barbs, not with the pain, that with which they came from the mouth of the first speaker or the originator of the of the message. If I present it in a wise, in, in a in a palatable way, what do you think the party listening to me, the message, how would you think she or he will perceive me? She will perceive me as wise. And that would enhance my ability to help them mediate. But if it's negative, if I keep carrying negative messages, unpolished messages, uncut, uncut messages, unpackaged messages, badly packaged messages, dehumanizing messages, of course, it, 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 that, that behavior and attitude on my part will create a distraction in the mediation process. Again, the little bars, they say, when you send, um, uh, forgive me, I'm going to paraphrase what they say. When, when you send a, 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 um, a person with a, a low status in society, so the person has is, is of a low status in society. The actual word they use is a slave. If you send, um, give the message uh, that a slave, uh, a message is that if you send, um, let me say it to you so that I'll be able to <laughs> get the translation. When you send um, me, somebody, a person, the message of a slave, he delivers it as a free bond. That's speaking to what we are discussing now. 
about the way you carry yourself when you have to deliver a message. You can carry yourself in a way that does not bring respect to you. And you can carry yourself in a way that attracts respect to you. Irrespective of, the, of your pedigree. Your, your, when this person is meeting you, probably for the first time, they, 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 they get the impression that you are a person of great wisdom because of the way you speak. Words are very, very important, at least in mediation. Because like I said, the, 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 the key role of the, of, the, of, the, of the mediator is effective communication. And so you, 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 carry, um, you, you carry messages uh, with great dignity, which means that the messages must be dignified, not hurtful, not painful. No matter how they were raw when you got it raw. Why? So that the message could be considered. Because inside this message, which originally sounded painful and hurtful, may be the solution to this dispute. Um, I think we can pause uh, here and uh, continue in um, lecture um, 44. Uh, please remember to remember to subscribe to this channel. Remember to try and um, um, read uh, the book. And then, uh, very important, remember to uh, apply what we are learning to the conflicts, various conflicts that you are encounter in your life, at whatever level you're at home, at work. Thanks again, and I'll see you in lecture uh, forty-four.